welcome to Dolce Bella Crochet Designs. I'm Deb, and today I am going to talk about temperature blankets. Temperature blankets are a big craze in the crochet and knitting world these days, and I have seen them around for several years, always thinking, hmm, not sure I like the idea. But for 2024, I decided this was the year I was going to attempt to make a temperature blanket. Here are the reasons why. In 2023, late in the year, in fact, just a couple of months ago, my husband and I moved to a new state. We have a totally different climate than what we had before. Before we lived in Texas and our climate was extremely hot majority of the year. And I just thought I really didn't need a temperature blanket. Didn't really want a temperature blanket. Well, we have since moved north, more northeast, and we are living in a more temperate climate not completely tempered but more tempered we still get our winter cold the cold in the winter and still get some heat in the summer but it's got a, a little bit more of a variety and a little bit more of a tempered variety so i'm like i want to make a temperature blanket besides that it would also be a wonderful way to document our very first year in this new place i started out looking at patterns looking at stitches looking at colors and the first thing that was one of the easiest things for me to decide on was I wanted to have purple as one of the main colors in the pattern in the blanket. So I went looking at different shades of purple, looked at different yarns, and I started just going to the basic, you know, Hobby Lobbies, Michaels, Joann's, you know, your local craft stores. I did look at a couple of yarn shops and looked at doing one um, out of some hand dyed. But the problem with that was I'd have to buy so much at the, you know, at the beginning because hand dyed is harder, I should say, harder to find an exact color match. So I chose to go with the basic acrylic yarn that I could get at a local, you know, like Hobby Lobby. I actually is where I got it. So, um, but I wanted it to be soft and I wanted all the colors to kind of blend together nicely. I started with that. Then I was looking at stitches and I really kind of like the idea of the moss stitch, which is just a single crochet and a chain. And I decided that would take a long time to make. So, and this was gonna end up being a fairly big blanket. So I decided, then I found, I come across the extended moss, which instead of a single crochet and a chain, it is a double crochet and a chain. And then you work the double crochet down in the previous row. So I decided to go with that. It also gave it a little more texture. And I think I'm gonna really like that look. So I figured out what I wanted for a stitch and I figured out kind of my color, starting on my color palette. So I've spent a couple of weeks looking at yarns, trying to decide. I, mean, I actually had to go to two different Hobby Lobbies to get the exact colors that I wanted because one Hobby Lobby would have some of the colors that I wanted, but they would be out of the other colors. So I had to go to a couple of different Hobby Lobbies to get them. I would like to share those colors with you now. So I started with three different shades of purple. So this is going to kind of be the middle range temperatures. And I've got plum, it's, a, it's just a yarn bee um, color, and it's 100% it's acrylic. So the first one is called plum. And it's going to be my dark one, the darkest one of the three. Then I've got the next darkest is called French Lilac. Again, it's a yarn bee, soft and sleek. And my third one is called Purple Haze. And I love that color. So I'm like, okay, those are some great colors. They're soft, they're subtle, um, and they're more of the cool tones. So I wanted to go with that. Now I just had to figure out what direction I was going to go towards the warm temperatures and what colors did I want to go towards the cooler temperatures. That was my next problem. That was probably the most challenging. So going towards the warmer colors, I have decided to go with some pink, some, some lighter pinks into the dark red. So I have chosen to go with mauve. It's this color right here. Then I have blush, which is a light pink. And then I found this burgundy, which has kind of a purple hue to it um, for the, dark, the hottest or the warmest of temperatures. So those are my warm tones. Now going towards the cooler tones, 
I chose two shades of green, a sage and willow. And then the rest are going to be shades of blue. So I started with some lighter shades of blue. This one is called sky, which I really like that color. And the other one, the other lighter color is called crisp air, which I think is very fitting because when the temperatures are cool here, it's very crisp. Going into the extreme or the more extreme colds, I've got a color called teal blue. And then for a final color for the temperatures that I think I'm going to use this is for the temperatures that we don't usually get on the cool side here from my research, and that is the silver gray. So it's going to be my coldest of temperatures. So now that I have found my colors, I need to decide what it is and what color is going to work for what temperatures in what temperature range do I need to have. So I took 12 colors and I decided to go 100, zero to 100 degrees and divide it by the 12 colors. And that gave me between six and eight degrees per color. And I thought, well, that's maybe a little too close. So I decided, well, the gray was the one color I wasn't sure about putting in. So I will just make that zero and below or 10 and below because it wouldn't be used very often. And I would work from there. And I also knew that the dark red, the burgundy, was going to be for the extreme temperatures. And there's very few really high temperatures here that are above 100 degrees. So like if I can make that 90 and above, I think that would work. So then I had to kind of figure out what temperatures would be good for the rest of them. The next thing I did was I went on to Canva and I created a temperature blanket worksheet. So I've got my temperatures over here. I'm going to write my temperatures over here and then I'm going to write my colors over here. So let's get started at doing that now. Now that I have all my colors and all my all my temperatures and all my colors put on my sheet, I am now going to attach samples of the yarn to each one of those. So the first thing I need to do is punch a hole in each one of these circles. So I'm gonna punch a hole. Okay, and then I'm going to take each of my colors and I'm going to weave my colors in there and um, make my sample. So I have decided that burgundy is going to be 90 degrees or warmer. So I have put my burgundy string right there. I'm going to do the rest do the rest of my colors in the same way. Now that I have all my colors on my, my sheet next to my temperatures, I'm ready to begin recording and getting ready to make my temperature blanket. So the next thing I did was I wrote down all the temperatures for all of the days so far in January. Today is the 17th, so I've already written down all the temperatures in January for us, and I wrote them in my little planner kind of on the day I just wrote what the temperature was. So now I'm ready to go and get started. And what I can do is when I have finished that row, I can put a check mark or an X beside that day so that I know that I've already done that day and I know where I'm at. So now I have 16 days to get done on my temperature blanket. Again, I have chosen to do the extended moss, which instead of a single crochet chain and all alternating every row it's a single crochet and a double or it's a chain and a double crochet and it will be alternating it's going to give it a little more texture which i like lots of texture be watching as i get started with my temperature blanket